Hello and welcome to Level Up and Friends. Uh, well, we're continuing our Free Comic Book Day 2023 extravaganza. Um, I'm pretty excited for our, our new our guest this week. Um, it's the first time she's been at our show. It's the first time I've had a chance to to chat with her in real life. Uh, I'm joined this week by Natasha Allegri. Hi, hello everybody. Hi. Um, what do you think? What what, what do people might know you from? Um, I worked on Adventure Time for a while, and then mm -hmm. I've, I've spent a lot of time posting drawings online, which led me to create a series called Being Puppy Cat, which is on Netflix. Um, but like, I guess I might be most known for a Garfield animation where he's very small and just cycling lasagna into his mouth. As is his want. Mm hmm <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, you know, obviously you worked in Adventure Time, uh, being Puppy Cat is an animation. Um, how did you get into animating? Um, for a while on the internet, I was, when I was in high school, I was doing journal comics, uh, where I would just do like two or three panels about my day. And, um, uh, I did that for a while into college and that's how the creator of Adventure Time, Penn Ward, found my stuff. And um, through that, I took a test and kind of fell into animation. But my first love is comics. Like, that's kind of what I am hoping to end up doing. Say, so, uh, you've done some comics now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done some for uh, print, mm -hmm. uh, some Adventure Time comics, so an anthology with Piao, which I thought was really cool for their X Mag, and um, Fiona and Kate comics, the Bee and Puppy Cat comics, and then maybe some random stuff that I'm not remembering. Yeah, is there uh, any like? Well, I guess we don't want to give away any particular potential future ideas, but is there a particular? Like let's say like licensed comic like would you write like what like Marvel or DC or like established comics character would you love to tackle one day? Oh my gosh! I, I guess know. I would have to know a lot about the character yeah. or the, the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Rumiko Takahashi ever, I it would be so hard to live up to her art. But if she ever wanted like some kind of a Ranma Tojinshi, maybe I'd be down for that. Say at that when was the last time they made Ranma? I think that's done. I think it's been yeah. done for a while. But like they had, they released some, you know, I think a new some kind of new animation where all of her characters hung out together a few. Yeah, years. Yeah, I remember they did something new with it not too long ago. I just don't remember exactly what it was. Uh, which is you know, hey, that's cool. She's done a lot of uh, amazing work over the years and yeah. stuff. People like. I don't want to say she's up there with like Tezuko, but that's a big statement. But she's done a lot of like hit series that people would know about, you know? Yeah, she's a beast. She's yeah. like, she's amazing. I guess we can get to that. Like, what's uh, some of the, the, the artists that have inspired you over the years? Yeah. Um, Rumiko Takahashi and a lot of Sunday comics, like, one called Zitz, I would read a lot. I used to read Zitz, yeah. And this is cool. And yeah. then <laughs> um, Garfield, of course. Yeah. The Hill, a lot of um, home movies. So I was, I was really into uh, comic strip, like newspaper comics, especially my big ones were Peanuts and Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, Calvin and Hobbes is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, no, no, it's all good. So my dog will probably be barking at some point, so I'll have to edit that out. Nice. <laughs> but um, no, that's cool. It's, uh, you don't hear a lot of people give a lot of appreciation for like comic strip comics. I mean, they're the the drawings in those are always so beautiful. Like they've drawn the same thing over and over again and just finessed it over a certain amount of time. So like I remember the way some like in Zitz that they drew the hand when it would hang from the the um, wrist really well just copying that the shorthand and lots of beautiful drawing in comics on the same day yeah like like those comics specifically because there's such a limited amount of space yeah to either to be able to tell like every day or every you know every edition you have to have 
either a joke or you're telling like a story like in like four to six panels yeah just the economy of time like it's really fascinating to study yeah um just because I like to write for fun, but like, it's just thinking about it in terms of like, you have to cut all, everything out. Like all your, mm-hmm. like, you know, when you, you like to be a writer, like, you like to put in as many adjectives and let people know how smart you are. Um, <laughs> but it really like helps like focus, you know, what needs to be said and what you need to do. And it, I, I think it's even anyone's remotely interested in an artistic endeavor. I think that's always a fun experiment to like give yourself as many limitations as you can yeah I think I work best like that it's always fun to be like put in a box and then decorate yeah. the box because but- like now now I've grown up with some of my friends have grown up and have started their own comics and one of their big advices is always like hey even though you're the boss like you set a deadline that you need to meet yeah. because that's going to keep you just on task and keep you moving otherwise you just wallow forever and you never get anything accomplished yeah, that's a good rule. So what were some of your inspirations for the creation of Bee and Puppy Cat? Um, I guess all the, the media that I was consuming at the time and and some stuff I want to see. Uh, I was really, like, I really enjoy drawing girls and cats. So that kind <laughs> of made it, that kind of put me in that box. Uh Magical girl genre at the time was really interesting to me. And I guess like internet comics too. Okay. So any particular web comics like uh, Catch Your Eye? I I used to read a lot of, do you, do you know Jack, the comic Jack? Like J-A-C-K? Yeah, it was, um, it was like a I... keen spot comic. Mm-hmm. And it was about, he would, he would, or she, whoever was the artist, would take like current day affairs and really dramatize them into this comic about, I think it was Death, who was trying to do some stuff on Earth, and uh, it's furries. So yeah. I really, really enjoyed reading that. Like, <laughs> That's when I remember. I don't remember that one specifically, but it sounds like something I would read. I think he's still drawing it. The last time I checked. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's been uh, like for two decades now, maybe. What is he making? One piece? <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so what have been what were growing up? What were your favorite some of your favorite like cartoons or comics, just in general? Yeah. Um <clears throat> I've watched King of the Hill since I was in maybe middle school. Uh I watched a lot of sitcoms too, like not animated, like yeah. Frasier and um, one called Caroline in the City, which was about a, a woman in, I think, New York, who was a cartoonist. Oh, yeah, I believe it was New York. I, I watched that as a kid too. <laughs> that one was cute. I really yeah. liked that show. Um, it was like, very anime. Yeah, it like kind of disappeared and nobody ever talks about it. It's I one mean, of the best sitcoms. I mean, I love King of the Hill and Frasier as much as the next guy. Yeah. Um, I hopefully the revival is good uh, for either of those because I know I know King of the Hill's coming. I know they've been talking about Frasier for forever, but we'll see. Frasier was in New Jersey, or um, uh, Kelsey Grammer was in like maybe five minutes away, um, premiering his beer. At yeah, this- I was say because he was at Beer Fest, which is a uh, a local event local to our area every year i know he was there a year or two ago my brother got to meet him i don't especially like going to that event just because it's too much well usually when we're at that event we as a store have a booth so we'll do like you know a retro game lounge setup but like it's just so i'm there working and it's just like it's a long two days uh so i don't once I was, we stopped doing that because they started moving it. They moved it outside, so I don't have power. Oh. I was like, oh, I'm tired. I don't feel like being around drunk people all day long. <laughs> you know. Uh, but my brother and his... I, yeah, they weren't married yet. So this was a couple years ago. But my brother and his now wife got to meet him uh, and said that was pretty cool. I, They didn't know he was going to be there because it's like, oh, he's here for owning a beer. Um, but that's cool. Um, that he's still coming to the area and doing stuff. I say I met Dan Aykroyd when he came to the area promoting his vodka. Oh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, nice. 
But, you know, some cool stuff happens in Jersey, which I know you now are a new resident to the state. Mungus fan. Yeah. Frasier reboot sounds like, like, what are they going to do about the dad and the dog? So the, 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 the pitch I heard, which I think is not terrible, is it's more about Frasier's relationship to an adult Frederick. So it's kind of... It's got kind of echoes of uh, Frasier and Martin. Yeah. But like, so, but like, then I'm like, is that too derivative? Is that too similar? I don't know. Sometimes I like when things kind of were good and then are done. Which yeah. I, I know in the way pop culture works now where like nothing's ever over. Right. Like, it's just, it's just a matter of time before there's another reboot. And we'll I, I don't know the bodies and make the corpses dance. Exactly. But I, I like when things are new and, and different. Or if you're going to give a reboot, give me something wi- a wildly different interpretation. Uh, yeah. Something I haven't seen. What's the last reboot you saw that you thought was really legit? All right. So I'm a big Ninja Turtles guy. I, oh, yeah. Those are all great. Yeah. I first saw Rise. I was like, oh, you know what? The show's not for me. Mm-hmm. It's for kids and it's sort of like to me it was like for the teen titans go crowd and like that's not my thing i watched like one random episode and like all right this is not my thing and then my buddy cherry picked like a bunch of the really good episodes and showed it to me and i've since fallen in love with that one it's one of my favorite versions of them now but they're ones where they like i like that they kind of reinterpret them and make them really weird and different every time because yeah. i've seen i've seen the the 80s show like i don't need that again and again One of the reasons I don't particularly like the new Star Wars stuff, which is like, I've seen, like, why did it have to be Rebels versus Empire again? I've seen that. I've seen that since the 70s. Now it has new special effects. Yeah, I think the old effects in the original one hold up still. Like, you know, you clean it up, you clean up your masters a little bit, like for, you know, HD TVs, but I think it's fine. I don't know. Now that the Ewoks blink, they look creepy and weird. <laughs> um, but know, what about you? What's a what's a reboot you think has worked recently? I don't. I don't think I can remember that I've watched. I I haven't even watched the new Lum, the Urusai Yatsura. I haven't mm-hmm. watched that yet. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the King of the Hill one because I think the creator. Still has a lot of really interesting thoughts that I want to hear. Yeah, I think that something like that wouldn't come back if Mike Judge didn't have an idea. Yeah, because uh, he seems like that kind of guy, which is like I, I'm. If he was like done with it, done with it. You know, I'm sure everyone's been bothering him for more ever since it ended, and it became like memes. But yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to. There's always things to look forward to, even then. Um. So the Bee and Puppycat show on Netflix, I know the first few episodes are a retelling, right, of the original show. Yep. Um, and then it went off and did its 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 new material. Is there uh plans for, for more beyond this? Um, I mean Frederator. You're allowed to say, of course. Yeah. Um Frederator, I'm sure, wants to make more. They just have to figure out if the platform wants it, if Netflix wants it. Mm-hmm. And you know if if they do, um, we'll see. Uh, but hopefully, we'll be making comics soon, which I'm really looking forward to doing. Yeah, I was actually looking into picking up some of your comics in anticipation for you coming to the store. But of course, since they were licensed books, they're like way out of print. Um, but yeah. the Bee and Puppy Cat comic was for what Boom Studios, I think, right? Yeah, I think I think the Adventure Time ones were as well, right? Yeah, I, think- I remember they were doing the Cartoon Network books for a while. Yeah. Oh my god, was that like seven years ago? It's probably more. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Man, even before the events in 2020, and like the time dilation it caused, where everything seems like it just happened and it was like three years ago, I was having like it's hard to keep track of what year does what. Um. But, you know, I hopefully, uh, uh, you know, they get some new comics and be able to keep them in print. 
I mean, one of the nice new things, uh, if you make the comics yourself, is like you can. It's getting easier and easier to self-publish. I've heard a little bit about that. I want to do that as well with my own stuff. Yeah, and then you can control whether it stays around or not. Because you know, since the licensing and whatnot with those other ones, you know, people if they want to get your comics, they get they're expensive on the back end. Yeah, ideally, you know, you can get a nice trade paperback, you can put it on your shelf, you can show it to friends. And if it's always available, it's always available at stores like us. Nice. Yeah, you know, something like that I'd want to keep on hand. Um, especially when you know, hey, if there's new seasons coming out, you know, it's always good to stock up on merch, right? Speaking of, when are we getting a puppy cat plush? Um, I think one just came out. Oh, really? Yeah. It's I thought it was funny that like I didn't see I didn't see those anywhere when that was coming out. Because I remember uh when the the show first started because it was on YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember when that first came out. Everyone was talking about it. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm surprised. This seems like I mean this positively. He seems extremely toyetic. Oh yeah, he's yeah. so cute. Yeah, like you want to see like. Yeah, like plushes and charms and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was surprised I didn't see any of that anywhere. But maybe because of the uh, the for lack of a better term, like the professional quality of the show, because it's on YouTube. I was like, oh, this is a big company's doing this. Like they all have they have all that stuff in the bag. And then you know, I find out like, hey, that's not necessarily the case. I think initially. There was a puppy cat plush where he had a real bell. Mm-hmm. So when you shook him, he sounded like puppy cat does. And he also had a little um, squeezy voice chip thing in him. And he would say a few phrases. Uh, but that one's hard to get. Maybe impossible. But they recently came out with like a smaller gingerbread shaped puppy cat plush. Okay. I bet he looks delicious. <laughs> yeah, he's he's very cookie shaped. It's cute. Yeah. But when are we getting B and Poppy Cat Funko Pops? That's when you know you've made it. I um this is going to be a spicy take, but I hate Funko Pops so that's, much. That's fine. Uh some of my <laughs> employees do as well. <laughs> they drive me nuts. I had a roommate who had a bunch of them. Um, and we we would randomly fight over them. <laughs> That's hey, I I have a few of them. Uh, I don't have any particular opinions one way or another. As a retailer, I appreciate that they're very popular. Yeah, um, but you know their strategy kind of works where it's like license everything. Everyone's a fan of something. Yeah, like, we'll have something for everybody. So it's, you know. That's the only reason I have some, because it's like, oh, man, they made one of, like, Death from the Sandman comics. It's like, I don't make merch of her. I better yeah. buy it, you know? There's something so smart also about making them all uniform. Yeah. Like, if for most things, that would scratch the itch in my brain where I would want to have a few of them. But yeah. for some reason, Funko, <laughs> Funko Pops just, like, were super unappealing to me. They're, they're, ex- they're too minimalized, and they have, like, these wide dead eyes dead eyes yeah yeah i i definitely get why people like them and i definitely get why people don't like them um i'm sure as an artist you probably your opinions are probably intensified because you see <laughs> the realization of like the artistic style if there was a bm puppy cat funko pop i would be pissed <laughs> <laughs> uh, good to know is that kind of stuff like entirely up to you though just curious. Um- I, like I have no idea. I, I'm. It, it might be up to a certain point. Like mm. I'm sure there are things that if I was just like no, they would still be like, well, we're gonna do it anyway. But um, for the most part, I get to kind of, kind of look at stuff at a certain phase. That's cool though. Say so, I'm not someone who's ever created anything that's po- that anyone beyond like people that know me have seen. So you I have no idea what spot. it's like to make like. A show on Netflix, you know. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's pretty cool. At the very least. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, you know, um, 
we get to see more of your work soon, uh, whether it's in comic book or animated form. Um, obviously, if you get make comic books, let me know, and uh, we will definitely be stocking stocking them uh, since we are a comic book store. Be- uh, I don't carry DVDs, so I can't help you with the cartoons, but... <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to give you some books. That'd be really oh, yeah. Fun. I would love to sell them. Um, hey, if you launch a new one, we'll do a special signing where you just come right in. Fun. We'll do it all around you. Um, and, you know, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Free Comic Book Day. Thank you so much for chatting with me for a little bit here. Um, You know, May, May 6th is, as of recording, only a couple of weeks away. So uh you know it'll be soon and um hopefully you have a good time i'm excited to have you at our show at our show thank you so much for inviting me i'm so excited to go to an event in new jersey i like haven't done a comic or i haven't done a comic event in a really long time and i like as soon as i saw that this local one was inviting i was just so excited to experience a jersey so i got you during the the uh oh my god the blue sky part of the event where it's like i'll reach out to all the people i know are gonna say no and then <laughs> uh that way i say at least i tried and then you got right back to me i was like oh 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 that's really cool juiced up for it so yeah like- which you know and then i was like hey uh everyone at work uh natasha allegri is gonna come they're like wait really and I'm like yeah she's excited so yeah. uh yeah, I told a lot of when I started telling our employees you got there, a lot of people were like, Oh my god, I gotta start putting money aside because I have to buy a bunch of stuff. <laughs> it's so close to where I live too. Like the drive won't be too long and it's, it's so fun to I've heard about Atlantic City. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. So we're not too far from Atlantic City. Um, but we're not like in Atlantic City. But well, well I'll I'll say about two weeks. I think the 14th or 15th, I guess this would be a little bit inside baseball for people. Um, I'll have to have like the floor plan and everything like locked because I need to get in for fire inspection and stuff. So I'll send everyone who's attending uh, an email. Like, you know, a lot of people have been here before, but like I always like to send just like, hey, here's the times you can set up. Here's directions. Here's the map of where people are, are going to be sitting. So that way you can get in. We know, can help you get where you need to go as quick as possible. So I'll have all that for you um, oh. in a couple of weeks. It's getting real close. I'm getting real excited now. Like it's setting in, you know? Do you have a lot more work to do? before. Uh, it's never ending work. <laughs> uh, so much so that I'm taking the week off uh, right immediately afterwards. Oh, good. Yeah, you've, you'll have deserved and earned it. Yeah. So, what are you going to do with your time off? Uh, it's, at the very least, I'll do a staycation. Yeah. Um, I might go visit my aunt in South Carolina or something. I don't know. We'll see. That sounds nice. Yeah. I just, I'm going to need to not be at work for a couple of days. <laughs> I'm already at work uh, almost every day. And then I'm doing work at home as well. You so, you know, that. but that's how, that's how I put on the fun shows that we do. So hopefully this this year's, I'm calling it Giant Size for Comic Book Day. The idea was to go as big as possible. Hopefully people are excited about it. Sounds like you love what you do. So I mean, not... if you don't do what you love, why do it? Right. Yeah, I agree with that. But again, thank you so much for joining me. Um, looking forward to meeting you in person. Um, I know everyone at the store is very excited, so I'll make sure they have chance to uh, have coverage. So they can come out to your table and say hi. Thanks, All right. Have a good one. Yeah, bye.